So, um, so glucocorticoids have been used in RA since 1949. Um, the the use has sort of trended down a little bit in the last few decades with the um, the onset of the use of synthetic DMARDs and biologics. Um, these DMARDs and biologics, though, are quite expensive. So, Remicade, one of the older biologics. Uh, the yearly drug cost alone is twenty-five thousand to forty-six thousand dollars. So, um, me and my colleagues, we were looking into getting back on the glucocorticoid train, so to speak. Um, right now, glucocorticoids are used to as bridging therapy at the beginning of the disease trajectory, um, while getting onto a DMARD or a biologic, um, and they're also used in the event of a flare-up of the disease. Um, However, they're dosed at higher doses, so medrol dose packs or things like that, starting at 40 to 60 milligrams a day. Um, what, and what we're looking into is trying to uh, use lower dose prednisone to induce remission. Um, the first thing that comes to everybody's mind when you talk about glucocorticoids is the, uh, the side effect profile that comes along with them. Um, but these side effects are are more prominent with the higher doses, so that's why we were looking into lower doses. So we did a chart review. Um, almost 1,400 patients were screened, and we had 201 that met our inclusion and exclusion criteria. Um, patients were included if they were newly diagnosed with RA, and if they were treated with uh, 10 milligrams or less of prednisone a day. They were excluded if they'd ever been treated with a DMARD, um, if they had been treated with prednisone by a primary care provider before the uh, referral to our service. And they are also excluded, obviously, if they didn't have sufficient data to measure our outcomes. And the outcomes that we were looking at were disease severity prior to treatment and after treatment. So the, um, we use the DAS-28 ESR score to uh, assess the disease severity, and we also looked at the ULAR response criteria, which takes into account both the, the final DAS score after treatment as well as the improvement in the DAS score. So um, we found that uh, statistically um, we had significant improvement in all four components of the DAS score, which are, take into account uh, SED rate. Our, we were using the DAS-28 ESR, so it takes into account SED rate. Uh, tender joint count, swollen joint counts, and as well as visual analog pain scale on a scale of 1 to 10. So unsurprisingly, we also saw significant improvement in the DAS score overall with uh, an initial average score of 5.1 and an improvement all the way to 2.7. Um, we, al uh, we also categorized our patients based on the DAS score as uh, either in remission, low disease severity, moderate disease severity, and severe severity. Um, at presentation, 95% of our patients were in the moderate to severe category, and after treatment, 5% uh, remained in the severe category, while 54.2% had reached remission. Um, finally, the, using the ULAR response criteria, our patients, 69.7% uh, of our patients had uh, showed a good response. So, um, we, I briefly touched on the cost, and that's one of the significant findings that we or one of the reasons we think these findings are significant. Um, if we can hold off on biologics even for a little while, we can and replace them with the very inexpensive glucocorticoids for that period of time, um, we could potentially save quite a bit of money um, when it comes to RA treatment. But I think the more, more significant and more exciting uh, um, uh, aspect to our findings is that we're using low-dose prednisone as opposed to high-dose prednisone. So I talked about the, uh, the adverse effects of glucocorticoids a little bit before. Um, we know that the long-term adverse effects are related to the cumulative lifelong dose that a patient gets. So uh, if we can, instead of treating patients with flares with high-dose prednisone every time and we can treat them with low-dose prednisone instead, we can theoretically uh, decrease their lifelong exposure to glucocorticoids and then therefore decrease their risks for adverse effects as well.